We came so far from dreams. The path was hard for me. They thought we fall, you see. Well, look at us now, look at us now. We make it high, but we on the scene. Yeah, that's a thousand degrees. I got a grind for me and my team. Yeah, you make me go in. We see the clouds when we come around. You know that I roll with some kids. We sit it down, I don't hear a sound, but I ain't. Tell me who better than we We saw in the places you never could reach When we walk in that spot, don't hear none of you speak Shh, do you want peace or the peace? A king about to put you to sleep Listen, my team is elite You not even qualified to compete He's starving, he barely can eat I guess that's why he always itching for beef So I put him on ice and I told him to chill Close your mouth if you can't pay for the meal Making statements that you know you don't mean Nice guy trying to act like he mean Keep it a buck, keep it a bean Attitudes will put you dudes in a beam Isakai, he don't live in reality Shake back off a cup of fatality oh. Yeah, how you gon' hate when you mirror us? He think he a star, he ain't serious. X him out, we not on the same frequency. If you broke, you ain't hearing us. Work the screw, anime, that's how I feel, period. We winning, that's making them furious. We make it high when we on the scene, yeah, that's a thousand degrees. I got a grind for me and my team, yeah, you know we gon' win. We see the clowns when we come around, you know that I run with some kids. We sit it down, I don't hear a sound, but I ask you who better than we. Yo, what it do you guys? It is your boy, Leon Mookie here, back with you with another new what if for you guys that I promised that I would do in the near future. And it's finally time, time to finally bust it out. And hopefully I satisfy some of you guys, especially in this community when it comes to shipping of all things. So yeah, at any rate, this is what if Izuku was Isekai 2 fairy tale. And yes, this is going to be the first of many fairy tale what ifs I'm going to be doing. Starting with that of Izuku being transported to the world of fairy tale after all. And I'll probably be moving on to that of what if Natsu's after this what if to be honest. But unlike that of well black my Black Clover what ifs and MHA what ifs, I won't be able to think of too much that would work with that of the world of fairy tale, given, well, Natsu's origins, his, and the work, and also things that wouldn't break the too much of the immersion of fairy tale, to be honest. You know, it always tries to do a mixture of modern and, well, medieval and medieval times during fairy, with fairy tale, but there's some times when it can get a little bit well, out of out there, to be honest. But even so, that's just me. Also, this is going to be a part zero, focusing on how he was sent to the world of fairy tale while also joining the guild as well. So, with all that said, let's get into this, shall we, guys? In one world, humanity begins to evolve and develop unique and and complicated powers known as quirks, abilities that you would see, and that's if you're well, da daily comic books, after all. And through this, a new profession was born known as Pro Heroes. The new heroes that would save the day, protect the innocent, and defeat villains. People who would use their quirks to harm the innocent and for their own selfish wants. As this, in this world, it would give the rise to one of the greatest heroes in, in the entire world. This boy would be known as Izuku Midoriya, hero name... Deku. However, that's only in one timeline. However, in another timeline, Izuku Midoriya doesn't become the world's greatest hero, but instead becomes the greatest and most influential mage no known to that of Earthland. Currently, and that of the woods in the outskirts of Masafu City Prefecture, a district city of Tokyo, lies that of a young boy a young boy basically wandering the woods aimlessly nowhere else to go and basically having tears in his eyes as he couldn't help but cry as one as this is the hero of our tale this is izuku midoriya age 10 as this boy who always dreamt of wanting to be a hero wanting to be just like his idol the number one hero of japan all might but however, unfortunately, that is not the case. The reason being, due to him having no quirk, and that makes him quirkless. You would think not having a quirk wouldn't be too much of a problem, to be honest. I mean, it just makes him a normal person. However, 
the normality of things is that quirkless is basically the abnormal since everybody in this world has quirks. Literally 80% of the human population has a quirk and the remaining 20% doesn't. Izuku is in that small minority of the 20% of the human population. Because of this, he was constantly bullied, looked down upon, and seen as that of a pariah. Even a boy that he used to see as his childhood best friend, a person he used to look up to and always admired just as much as his idol All Might, Katsuki Bakugo, treated him badly as well. Started treat started telling everybody to treat him like crap, bully him, look down upon him, ignore him, and many other things as well, which soon led to currently right now, with Izu as Izuku wanted to spend time with Bakugo again, just hoping to rekindle their friendship after all these years. But the one thing that basically t that Bakugo said that literally hurt him, telling him, Nobody wants you, Deku. Nobody needs you, needs a worthless loser like you. Do everybody a favor and just disappear. Nobody wants to see a worthless, quirkless dork like you. Especially me. After that, soon, something broke within Izuku. And since then, he's basically been walking aimlessly. Not even going bothering going back home after, all, after, after school. And just, well, decide... And doesn't know what else to do, as all as his as his eyes are still red and puffy, snail sniffling as well, realizing that the friend he used to know truly doesn't want anything to do with him anymore. But then again, this is the same boy that basically does nothing but bully him, hurt him, and used his quirk on him all the all the damn time. So why, why would just trying to want to rekindle their friendship be any differently? As, as Izuku continues walking forward, not even caring, but then soon, the, he begins to see that of a bright flash, within wondering, what, what's going on? As he wondering if it's somebody's quirk before the flash dies down. But then, once he appears, he's still in the woods. However, for some reason, Izuku feels like these woods are different way different from what he normally than the woods he normally goes into when he was a kid back in the day the same woods that he was just walking that he was just walking in just a little while ago now completely and utterly diff feels different especially he could even feel it in the air as well with izuku looking around wondering uh where am i oh man mom is going to be so worried about me what was i thinking just because I let Kachan's mean words get to me. With then, Izuku just continually walking around, hoping to find at least something that looks familiar. With then, he begins hearing that of tons of animals in the distance, wondering, what? What's going on? I've never heard animals like that before here. There's always just mainly been birds and also maybe a few squirrels, squirrels and even that of a few wild dogs, but... Nothing with then. Soon, he begins hearing something shaking, rattling in the distance, as it almost feels like that of a miniature earthquake, as Izuku basically goes down to his knees with the, hold, as he holds onto the ground at dear, for dear life. But then coming through that of the tree line, as it being that of a giant boar, with then with massive tusks that look like they'd be sharp enough to pierce a person's body as Izuku basically screams out with the, seeing that thinking that it is a quirk animal however before that before that of the boar could even get near that of Izuku it soon slumps down to the ground almost like it's already dead with then it begins to create that of a massive shock wave that almost knocks Izuku back, however, he still holds his ground. With then, Izuku blinking a few times before noticing the monster as he skids back for a little bit, as he whimpers, whimpers as well. With then, soon, a man saying, Ooh, took care of that. Uh, it wasn't really hard taking care of, but it was annoying as it always kept on running away from me. I'm not that scary, am I? 
within. Izuku looking up, seeing that of a tall, large, muscular man, with that uh, wearing that of a black cloak that covers all, covers his arms and his and that of his back. However, you could see quite a bit of a bit of his top abs and his muscular chest as well. As he's also wearing that of armor covering that of his, well, his abs after all. Alongside that of his waist and wearing that of blue pants and that of brown boots. Getting a better look at him, he also has that of a five o'clock shadow beard. That's of br light brown hair that's slicked back with then soon noticing the the green haired messy kid within blinking saying holy crap what are you doing out here kid it's too dangerous in a woods like this where tons of mutated animals and monsters are around with then jumping off that of the massive boar heading over to that of izuku with izuku saying uh, i've never seen a quirked animal like that before they've never been in a wood in woods like this within soon Raising an eyebrow saying, Quirt animal? Kid, the heck you talking about? With then saying, Uh, you, I mean, the boar, that pig or boar, actually, it's a quirked animal, right? To think that a quirk, that animals, that qu that animals with quirks like that could actually grow that big and size and have that much of a size. With then blinking multiple times saying, Huh? What are you talking about? Boars like this are pretty normal. They only get this pr pretty big once they have that of a huge amount of ether nano in their bodies. And it causes them to basically rampage like this. And due to that, that's the reason why I took this job, to be honest. With then blinking multiple times saying, wait, ether nano? What are you talking about, sir? With then soon, the man who couldn't help but look at Izuku in confusion saying, tell me. Where do you think you are, kid? Saying, um, Masafu, the woods outside of my home city of Masafu in Japan? With then saying, Japan? Uh, Masafu? I've never even heard of those things or those places before. The Beast Forest. It's a forest located on the king in the kingdom of Fiore, actually. I've never heard of a place like this. I think you're way too far home, kid. With then soon. Izuku saying, Fiore? I've never heard of that place. I'm in a different country? Did somebody use a teleportation quirk on me? With then saying, and there you go. Quirks, what is, you know what? I got a lot of questions for you, kid. But best to take this boar and also take you to the, to the town that's, that this thing has been rampaging at. For the time being, you can explain the situation there. Within saying, um, but sir, do you have a strength quirk by any chance? Because a thing like that so big would be, as then, the man basically picks up the boar with just one hand, not even while well, breaking a sweat, as Izuku couldn't help but be completely and utterly shocked and surprised, wondering, that's his quirk? Even for strength quirks, that people have their limits. I, I, the only person I believe that could possibly do something like that is All Might, and... He's not All Might. Well, is he? Could he be in disguise or something? With then, soon the man saying, come on, kid. I don't want to leave you behind. What kind of grown grown up would I be if I left an innocent kid like you behind? But then, after saying that, he continues walking. But then, Izuku following after the mysterious man. Within a few minutes, as they continue walking, Gildard asks the kid on who he is. As, his name, as he names himself Izuku Midoriya, the man also introduces himself as Gildart. Gildart Clive, wa wa fair, Wandering Mage and Mary of the Fairy Tale Guild. With then, Izuku saying, Fairy Tale Guild and Mage? You're not a pro hero? With then, Gildart couldn't help but be sh wondering, What's a pro hero? And you don't know what a mage, mage is? I'm surprised, kid. Normally, kids like you would be excited seeing mages like us. With then, soon, Gildart looking str looking at Izuku before noticing, holy crap, the ether nano around this kid is insane. Just being around it makes me feel like just trembling to my knees. And yet, 
it feels like the kid doesn't even notice it. Given the things he's been saying and all the weird mannerisms and even the figuring out that the fact that he's that he's in basically a country he knows nothing about, he did say something about teleportation. Could have been, could have somebody hit him with that of a teleportation spell? Possibly teleportation magic? Who would have the right mind to basically send an innocent kid to a, to a foreign land? Ugh. Adult people nowadays don't bother raising their kids or not even keeping an eye on them. As Gildard thanks this with Izuku wondering, what's happening? I was just, oh man, I'm so scared. What is mom going to do and freak out? With then soon arriving outside of the, outside of that of the forest, within in the distance, not too very far, you could see that's of a small town. As for Izuku, he completely and utterly shocked and surprised that he is, he literally is somewhere differently, somewhere that he wasn't before. As there's no no large city, no concrete jungle that he's normally used to, no no people basically walking around, not even near the suburbs that's near to that of his apart that's near his home being his apartment complex, not even able to hear that of heroes in a distance or even on patrols at all. As right now, Izuku is basically exactly where he is, completely in a foreign land. Not even anywhere near Japan whatsoever. With then, Gyodar continues walking with Izuku still stunned in shock. As seeing the look on Izuku's face, he realized, guess he finally come to the census. Realized that he's not at his home anymore. Hmm. With then, no, seeing that the kid may be on the verge of crying, he decided to go to Izuku and grab him by his hand saying, hey, Izuku, tell me, how old are you? With then, Izuku, hearing, the, hearing it while also still basically coming to realization that he's no longer at home anymore, saying, I'm nine years old, I'm supposed to be ten in a month or two, saying, you're a pretty good, you're, you're, you seem like a pretty big boy to not freak out too much, even though I can tell you're on the verge of bawling, bawling your tears out. Until that, until we can arrive at the village, I'll just hold it in just a little bit longer. Then when you, then when we can, just let it all out. I think somebody like you needs it. With then, hearing this, Izuku couldn't help but just nod, still in that of a look of shock and disbelief. With then, arriving at the village, seeing that of the, the town elder, with then saying, thank you for helping us out, Mr. W Mr. Fairy Tale Mage, saying, anytime, just doing my job. Surprisingly, I'm surprised that even though this was an A rank job, it felt pretty damn, it felt like that of a B rank to me, to be honest. But then soon, the man couldn't help but chuckle, saying, Well, I'm giving you that, you're one of Fairy Tale's best of the best. It only makes sense. But then soon, looking over to that of a elderly woman, as she offers that of a bag that sounds like but that of multiple coins. However, inside are actually crystals, which is the currency of Fiore, known as jewels. With then the other looking, seeing Izuku, saying, who's that young boy there? Saying, he's a kid I found in that of the beast forest, actually. I was thinking that is he a member of the village by any chance? Within, the elder shaking his head sideways saying, No, we've never seen a boy like that before in our lives. We're a small community of a hundred people. So it's doubtful that, so I would know if, we, if I've seen a boy like that before. Hearing this, Gildar couldn't help but narrow his eyes and that of, well, worry and suspicion saying, I see. Well then, thank you. I'll be taking the boy with me. Hoping to find a place for him at, anyway. I'll be staying the night if that's okay. With then the elder giving off a smile saying, of course, of course, Le you should rest after such a job, uh, such a job as that. We're free of charge at the end. With after that, Gildar couldn't help but smile before see still seeing Izuku. With then going down to his knees saying, come on kid, you can tell me everything that you, that you want to tell me at the end. And if you like, 
I'll explain things here about Fiore, here in Fiore. Within, Izuku, looking like he's on the verge of crying, couldn't help but shake his head in acceptance. Arriving at that of the at the pretty small but sizable inn, within arriving in that of the room, as looking looking at that of the nine year old, completely and utterly dumb, shocked and dumbfounded, scared for what's going to happen to him. Within, Guild Arts sent basically sitting on one on the edge of the bed, within saying, "All right then, Izuku, tell me." You're not from the. You're not around here at all. I can tell, in the in your mannerisms and how you speak. You're from. It seems like you're from a different country of all of anything. However, it seems like you're from a country that doesn't know anything about that of Ether Nano or magic as a whole, or even mages. So, I had to know, where are you really from, kid? And what is your culture like? Within, well, Izuku. Still looking like he's on the verge of tears, he hasn't whimpered at least that of once. But then saying, "I'm from Japan, my hometown of Masafu. It's a district. It's part of a bigger city known as Tokyo. In there, my world, we have that of abilities called quirks. Quirks basically allow those with that of unique abilities and also unique traits as well." They also give give us a powers that can help that can help people, and allow them to become heroes. Within hearing this, Gildar couldn't help but cross his arms while sitting up. Within saying, "Heroes, huh?" Within noticing that of the eye, that the sparkle in Izuku's eyes, saying, "So, what are these heroes like?" Within Izuku, looking like he's a bright, is about to brighten up, saying, "They're so cool." They are always there to help out people and save the day, protecting the innocent, stopping villains from hurting that of innocent people too. They always are always there to help and give give those hope, especially the greatest hero of all time, All Might, the hero, the number one hero of our of Japan and the symbol of peace. Because of him, world is a lot more safer and a lot more prosperous place, especially in my home country of Japan. It's because of him I. I, I want to be a hero, but I have no quirk. I have no power, and because of that, I, within, and seeing all of the symptoms for this kid, it's basically, look, low self-esteem, stutteringness, nervousness. He's basically a victim of bullying all, all too well. Gildar may be that of a scatterbrain from time to time, and he's aware of it, but he's not dumb enough to not be aware of social cues and people's mannerism and body language as well. That this kid is a bully victim through and through at such a young age. With then, soon, Gildar couldn't help but say, I see. Honestly, kid, now that I think about it, at first I thought that you were just from that of a foreign nation here, here in this world, but now that I think about it, the way you speak, the way you act, the way you call that of ma what we call magic, you call quirks. What you call pro heroes, we call ma mages. It's, and especially, mages work with that of guilds. So it's truly come to my attention, Izuku. You're not on. You're from. You're from a different world, actually. And that's quite rare, to be honest. You don't see people like you, people from other worlds. In this one, all too much. Within, hearing this, Izuku saying, "I'm, I'm in another world, but that that can't be. It, it's just Izuku. Tell me, was there a place called Fiore in your land? You say, I can tell by the way that you speak and the way that you act. It's quite. It, your world does seem quite more advanced than here on that of Earthland." You you go to school, and I can tell you go to school, right? Within Izuku nodding, but then saying, "Then have you ever heard of a place like that, or was you ever taught about places like that?" Within Izuku remembers that besides that of the major countries, besides their own in the U United States, the United Kingdom, China, Brazil, and Korea. There hasn't been any other nation that he doesn't know anything about. 
He's a smart kid, possibly one of the smartest in his grade besides that of Kachan, but he's never heard of another country that no, known as that of Fiore, which means he really is in another world. And after finally come to this realization, the tears finally release as Izuku begins to cry. Before then, Gildard wraps that of the messy greenette in his arms. Within, Izuku begins to wail loud, pretty loudly as well. Within, real, seeing, seeing the situation that the kid is in, realizing that he's basically in a strange land with no one to rely on, no one to call on, and no one to have. With that, he's soon. Gildard's finally made a decision, a decision he refused to think is the bad one at all. With that, the very next day, with Izuku actually crying himself to sleep as well, with then, Su, seeing that Gildard is gone, thinking that he's been abandoned by that of the muscular man, with then, soon, op the door opening pretty widely, saying, Up and at him, Izuku, we gotta get going. I wanna get I wanna get to that of Magnolia as soon as we can. Within soon, Izuku saying, What well, Magnolia saying it's a it's a city. It's exactly where my guild is at located at. Wait, your guild? Yep. The fairy tale guild. It's at least out of a good a good five hour walk from here. Within saying, Wait, five hours? We're walking for five hours? Within Gildar couldn't up and say yeah, I know. Normally, there is the trains, but honestly, I'm not a good... I'm basically banned from the train system, to be honest. But then, Izuku completely shocked, saying, Mr. Gildart, what have you done to be basically be banned from public transportation? With then, Gildart basically explained that he, ba that he destroyed a train once due to his magic, after all. Crush. With then... Izuku completely and utterly dumbfounded by the man's by the man's lack of well control over his magic. With then Izuku began to getting more curious, even though he's his entire life, ever since he was quirkless, he began to analyze quirks, figure out how they work and how and how useful they can be, and with our weaknesses as well. But now that he's in another world, though. A world where quirks aren't really relevant. A world where magic exists. Where magic is real. Maybe. But he wants to go back home. He wants to find a way back home, though. Maybe that there's a magic that can actually send him back. So, with that, he's saying, Mr. Gildard's with then saying, What is it, kid? Like I said, we gotta get going as quick as we can to hit the road. Saying, I know that, but could you teach me about magic? Tell me everything you know about it. All of the characteristics. What it's what can it do? Because maybe maybe I can find a way back home. Within hearing this, saying, You wanna find a way back home? Huh. You know, given limitless how magic is, not surprising. Alright then, kid. I can give you at least a rundown on the basics of magic. Basically the two types of magic that everybody uses. But other than that, if you want to know about more about other forms of magic, you're going to have to figure that you're going to have to ask somebody who's a bit of a, well, expert at this. Mainly that of my guild master and a few other people I know that can give you some hints too. So, I hope you're ready. Within, Izuku couldn't help but nod. With then saying, oh, good. Then, you be then we better get going now. With the after that, Izuku basically getting out of the bed and then heading, getting ready to head off. As they walk out of the village, within soon, Gildar begins to explain the forms of magic, ranging from that of caster magic and holder magic. Caster magic basically expelling magic from a person's body, while holder magic basically has that of magic inside of items and objects that the, that the, that the mage uses. Hearing this, Izuku begins to, well, mem memorize each and everything. However, it, however, he doesn't have anything to write with, so he doesn't know what to do, do without his hands. But then, too, Gildart saying, "Huh, 
I'm guessing you want to write this down, but then Izuku nodding, saying, <laughs> All right, then. There's a town in possibly in an hour or so. I'll get you that of a no, get you something so you can write things down. But then Izuku can help but no, sh shake his head and out of excitement. With that, Gildar could up and say, Oh boy, I found one of those studious kind of kids. <laughs> Just my luck. Well, at least he won't be too bit of rambunctious like that of Natsu and Gray, of course. Maybe this wouldn't be too bad of a journey. After that, at least after the next few hours of, well, traveling with Izuku now having that of a notebook where he write down everything that, got, that Gildard basically told him about that of magic and the types of magic. Gildard also told him that people can learn magic by reading books or being taught or being taught it by other people as well, if they have a strong affinity for the magic, to be honest. But even so, people being able to learn certain forms of magic isn't too hard. However, there are some magics that are so unique that it's impossible to learn them. With then Izuku wondering what they are, as Gildard says that they're known as ancient magic or lost magic. He only knows what they are, but he doesn't know exactly what they, what they, what ex what makes them lost magic or ancient as well. All he knows is that they're just old magic that people can't really learn nowadays. With that, Izuku hopes to find. And here's this from something that he from somebody that does know. However, little did Izuku know that during during this trip, something begins to call him, call for him called to answer asking to answer but given that izuku is too young and still hasn't fully well learned how to use his magic yet turns that call is going unanswered one bit during the rope during the road trip they finally arrive at that of the fairy tale guild within izuku couldn't help but be shocked and surprised seeing the place it, as it doesn't look anything spectacular or amazing that in back in his world, but however, just looking at the guild, it gives him the vibe of a hero agency, of a pro heroes agency, not on the same level as that of All Might's, but at least close to that, making Izuku even more excited to what's to come. But then soon, Gildart saying, "All right, let's enter. You ready, Izuku?" But then Izuku shaking his head saying, "Yes, Mr. Gildart." As then, as soon as they enter into that of the guild hall, but then soon a burst of explosions basically go right through the door, with Izuku completely and utterly shocked, saying, What? What's going on? I is Gachan here? With then saying, Huh? Who's Gachan? With then Izuku saying, Oh, uh, he's a friend from my world, with then soon hearing out of a scream, saying, Damn it, Natsu! Do you ever not cause any more property damage? But then, here you have an, another kid saying, Oh, whatever, Gray. Hey, and at least at least I can keep my clothes on. With then, after he, saying that, with then, a few, of, a few people begin to go up to that of the two boys known as Gray and Natsu. As Natsu has that of salmon pink hair, wearing that of a red uniform with that of short, short blue, short blue pants and brown, and that of brown, well, sandals. And that of a white scarf, while Gray is basically a black haired boy with that wearing basically nothing but underwear. With then soon a red haired girl in ha whose hairstyle is that of a braid wearing that of armor basically separates the two, saying, Will you two boys just break it up already? Seriously, I know you're kid, I know we're children, but at least act more mature of fairy tale wizards of all things. With then, Soon, Gray and Natsu was about to make excuses before then being bumped on the head by that of the red haired girl saying, No excuses! With then a high pitched, well, female voice saying, Ha! Look at them! Ba Seriously, Erza, you can't even keep track of your look, of your basically your pain in the ass brats. With then, as the girl being that of a white haired girl wearing that of a surprisingly skint. Dark, scantily clad top uniform, as in mainly that of a black tank top, with that of short, 
short with that of well black short shorts and boots as well as she has that of a menacing aura that kind of reminds her quite a bit of kachan but more sadistic in a way oh please mira if you're trying to get a rise out of me it's not gonna work besides oh it just shows that you're just as you're just as childish as these two with then soon Hearing that, you can see that of a visible tick mark on that of the on that of the girl known as Mira Jane saying, "You want to say that again, you uptight bitch?" As the two girls also begin start fighting, which to the point that it almost nearly destroys the guild hall, with with many members basically flying, while some not even bothered too much by it. With then suit, Izuku couldn't help but be completely and utterly shocked, with then saying, "This is your guild." With then say, yep, this is pretty much the norm after all. And just let you know, those kids are basically Natsu, Grey, Irza, and Mira Jane. There are a few others around that are just as much that are as your age as well. So show let them show it around. Within soon, as Guildar enters in the guild hall, everything goes qu completely and utterly quiet for a bit. Within everybody noticing Guildard and Izuku. Within many of the people can help but say, Guildards, hey! With then welcoming back the strong one of the strongest members of Fairy Tale. As everybody couldn't help but get, gather around him, even that of Grey and Natsu as well. With Natsu basically wanting to fight Guildards after all. With Grey trying to tell him that he would lose again. Which pisses Natsu off once more. With then soon a small man wearing that of a orange uniform as he has that of a staff of a cane staff and that of a pointy hat with then notice saying welcome back guild arts i'm guessing the job went well saying pretty easy to be honest i think the a ranking was just overboard with then saying well this is what happens when you take on that of smaller jobs than what you normally do saying true enough but I just wanted to take a break for at least a little while before getting back into things. Within soon, the man known as known as Makarov, Master, Guild Master Makarov, noticing Izuku as Izuku gets a little bit nervous, saying, Who's the young lad? I didn't expect you to bring a child here. Within soon everybody else noticing Izuku as the wide green emerald-eyed young boy couldn't help but feel a little bit nervous with all eyes on him as he's never really had, as when people basically do look at him, it's normally out of that of malice or that of pity or in that of disgust. However, within sued Natsu going up to that of Izuku saying, hey, who are you, kid? And why are you with gu guild arts after all? Within soon, guild arts couldn't help but say, go on, Izuku, introduce yourself. Within, Izuku getting a little bit nervous, saying, I'm, I'm Izuku Midoriya. Mr. Guildard saved me, so he brought me here. Then, within, soon, hearing this, a few, everybody couldn't help but laugh, saying, so Guildard's brought a kid here to bring him to Fairy Tale? Good choice there. With another guild member saying, yeah, if anything, I think he's, I think he's better off with us than he is anywhere else. Especially given how much of a stuttering mess he is. But a female member saying, I don't know. Some girls like stut like that of the ner shy, nervous types. With with then, both Natsu and Grey couldn't help buds want to know more about Izuku. As then, a few other kids, such as that of a girl with silver hair, just like that of Mira Jane. As she being that of Mira Jane's little sister, Lizana with that of her with also their other sibling elfman wanting to welcome izuku and wonder if he's going to be that of a member of the guild after all with izuku feeling a little bit nervous however seeing that they're not really being disgusted by him or basically hating him for not being for not having a quirk he actually feels a lot more comfortable and a lot more happy being around them within soon Guildart basically asking to speak with Makarov in private. With then soon no noticing that, well, Makarov and Guildart are basically walking away, being that of a brunette, a brunette haired girl wearing that of a orange dress. This being a girl known as Kana, 
as she is also the daughter of Gildard's. However, Gildard doesn't know that she's his daughter. Wanting to know what her father basically has to say to that of the master, within, eavesdropping on the two. Within, Sue, Makra saying, you're telling me the boy is from another world? Are you serious? Saying, mannerisms are completely different. Talk he talks completely different from us. Not only that, when I asked, he doesn't know anything about that of magic or ether nano one bit. Plus, even though I've been basically all around Fiore, I've also I've also taken jobs outside of Fiore as well. I've never heard of a country known as Japan, not even once. It could be in other continents all across all across Earthland, but doubtful. Especially since he doesn't even know the concept of a mage. Instead, the closest thing to a mage to him is what he calls a pro hero. It also doesn't help that in that world, everybody has that of certain abilities, even the even the normal population. But to them, however, Hizuku doesn't even have these abilities called quirks. He's considered quirkless in their world. But then, hearing this, Makarov saying, "For shame, the young Blad has basically suffered discrimination," and yet. I can sense his ether nano levels is quite high from here. It's almost massive to almost close to that of the level of a master. And you're telling me the boy can't feel anything? Saying, not that I know of. If anything, the boy, he has taken interest in learning magic and learning everything about other forms of magic as well. He's one of those studious types after all. So I was hoping that the guild could look after him. He, I think he wants to find a way back home. And you've been around the block more than I can ask for, Gramps. So, within, Makarov couldn't help but sigh. However, it's not that of annoyance or complaining. Instead, it's more of a, well, fondness, if anything. Within saying, we'll take the boy in. If he wants to be a mage, a fairy tale. We're, our doors are always open. Hearing this from his master, Gildarts couldn't help but smile, saying, thanks, Pops. It really helps out a lot. With Thin saying, yes, yes, whatever. Looking at Izuku, with Thin seeing him getting along with our already everybody else, thinking that maybe this would be a good spot for him um, until he finds a way back to his own world. As for Kana, who was able to hear all of this, couldn't help but feel for that of Izuku actually. At first, she was a little bit jealous that, well, a, that a kid, that a random kid basically got her dad's attention where she's been afraid to even tell the truth about her being Gildard's daughter after all. But now knowing the fact that Izuku was basically sent to another world away from his home and possibly family as well, she couldn't help but feel for him. Within, walking up to that of the green net while everybody else Want, wanting to get to know him as Izuku getting nervous but also looking a little bit happy and excited. But then, kind of saying, so you're Izuku? Saying, y yes. So, thinking about joining the guild by any chance? Or are you just here because guild arts brought you here? Saying, well, he did just bring me here, but I thought maybe I should join? I want to find my way back home after all, so... Saying, but I will let you know, even before, just let you know, being a fairy tale member is a full time job. And you can th and think of us like a second family, Izuku. Within Izuku saying, second family? Saying, yeah. Here in this get within, soon not saying, yeah. Here in fairy tale, everybody is family. Even this snow princess pointing at Grey saying, you want to say that again, flame brain? As Izuku hearing this, within, thinking that all, the only family he's had was always his mom and his dad. He barely knows anything about his dad, given that he works overseas and his mom has always been there for him. Except that one day, finding out that he was quirkless and he'll never be a hero. She just, all she could do was just apologize and hoping to comfort him. All, she, all he ever wanted was just to be here, hear the words that he can become a hero. Even without a quirk. But he would never hate his mom. If anything, he'll always love her. But he wouldn't lie that he did resent her a little bit for that. But being part of Fairy Tale, fair, 
a bunch of people who were just strangers to him just a minute ago, just already calling, already saying that he's already a part of the family if he joins Fairy Tale. He couldn't help but feel at least a little bit happy and feel like that a hole in his chest, a hole in his heart has already been filled as this would be the first step for Izuku to becoming the greatest mage in all of Earthland. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Love to read them. And yes, this was the first part of that of what if Izuku was Isekai to fairy tale. In the next part, I'll also will be going to that of a quick time skip and basically his his relationships with everybody in fairy tale. I'll also However, in that part, well, I'll, I'm going to that of a huge divergence in that of canon. And this may piss off quite a bit of people in the next part. So I'm letting you guys know this now. So if you guys easily get pissed off, I'm sorry. But this is just how it is and just how I think should work. So yeah, at any rate, if you guys like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to keep to date my videos when I upload on the channel. Also, please check out my Discord my gaming channel, my side channel, my other channel, my Patreon, and my Cash App. All link in the description below. So, with all that said, this is Leon Muki, signing out. Later guys, and hope you all take care. Shiro Kitsune, all yours my lady. Hi everyone, this is White Fox. If you liked Leon's video, click the video on the left to see the most recent one. And if you want to see more of this, click the subscribe button and notification bell and check out his playlist. If you still haven't subscribed, do so in the center. With that said, I hope to see you again on my love's channel. Bye!